Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate how if you are using Excel 2007, Excel 2010 you can take advantage of the new Excel tables. If you're using Excel 2003 you can use the Excel list. When we're working with data, particularly in this type of setup where we have daily transactional data in a range, it's inevitable that we're going to want to append some data. So here I have the original data and over here I have a new data set for recent data that I want to be able to append on to the original data set but still be able to take advantage of the built-in table structure that I have. Now I have a parallel set of data in Excel 2010 which will work in Excel 2007 and over here in Excel 2003. So let's come back and start with Excel 2007. When we feel that we're going to want to append data on to a data range, I suggest that you use the data tables that were introduced in Excel 2007 and continue in Excel 2010. So I'm going to take my original data set. I highlight all the cells in the data set, hold down control and click on the lower border, drag over to have a copy of that data set. This is the data set that I want to convert into a data table in Excel 2007, Excel 2010. Two ways to do that. Home tab of the ribbon in the styles group come over here and choose format as table or my preference is to come over to the insert tab on the ribbon and choose insert table or use the keyboard shortcut control plus T. Now we have a dialog box that appears. It confirms that my row has, my, my table has headers in the top row. So you can see by the bold formatting that I've identified the table headers in the top row. And you can see the marching ants or the marquee around my data set. Click OK. And now I've converted it into an Excel 2007, Excel 2010 table which gives me the drop down filters next to each of the field headers it gives me a style and i can easily change the style when i click inside the table notice that i get the table tools design and over here in the styles gallery i can apply a different type of style for example this style and I'll come back to this shortly. Now I want to switch over and show you if you are using Excel 2003 how you can take a parallel approach. In this case I have the same data for the original data set. This time rather than selecting all the cells with the mouse I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut. With one cell selected use Control A to select all of the cells in the contiguous range use control C to make a copy and then over here use control V to paste those values. Click escape to take it off the uh, clipboard and select all of the cells and double click any uh, column separator to automatically fit the new data. Over here in Excel 2003 to convert it into a list I go to the data menu and from the list fly out I choose create the list or the keyboard shortcut control L. Now I have the same dialog box that you saw for Excel 2010. So my list has header labels and these are the dimensions no blank rows no blank columns for my data. Click OK and now also notice that I get a table uh, a list a toolbar it's a floating toolbar. If for whatever reason that toolbar does not appear, here's a great tip. You can show any toolbar in Excel 2003 and earlier if you simply click any command. Right mouse click any command on any of the toolbars and you'll see all the possible toolbars. Come down here and we want to activate the list toolbar. So now it floats over here. Now notice that it will disappear if I click outside the list. Click inside the list and it comes back. 
Notice that one of the features on the Excel 2003 list toolbar is the toggle total row. So when I click, what I get down here, I get an additional row added into the Excel 2003 list. And down here, if you click, you'll be able to see that you can select from any one of 11 different functions. And up here, you'll see that it's using the subtotal function to provide the sum of the invoice total. I could come over to another field, click the drop down, and be able to select the sum total to subtotal the sum of the unit ship. If I want to be able to get a count of the number of invoices, just right mouse click over here. And in this case, I want to count the value. So I have 20 different invoices over here. Now, the beauty is that when I take advantage of filtering, so over here, if I want to see not all customers, but one specific customer, the ABC customer. Over here, notice that the subtotal function gives me the total for the visible cells. All right, what I want to do now is I want to remove that filter, and I also want to toggle off the total rows. Now let's come back over here into Excel 2010. What I demonstrated in Excel 2010 also applies to Excel 2003. So in addition to the drop-down filters, and in this case, if I want to see only the records for the ABC company, I can click on just that one company. When I want to see the total row, I must make sure that I have the table selected so that I have the table tools design and then come over here in the table, stool, table style options and click the total row. So there is the total row. And as I showed you with Excel 2003, I can just pick the function that I wish to have the total row give me a subtotal for that filtered row. So it's using the subtotal function. Also notice that with the table tools design that I can create a name for the table in Excel 2007, Excel 2010. So in this case, I'm going to apply my initials DR, which stands for Danny Rocks, and click OK. So I've now named the table. That's something that you can do in Excel 2007, Excel 2010 that you can't do in Excel 2003. Now let's come back here in Excel 2003. And what I want to do is I want to be able to append data. So notice that I have an asterisk down here as the additional blank row at the bottom. I'm going to come over here into the recent data. I'll use Control Home to bring me to cell A1. What I want to append are the records not including the labels, that would be redundant. So beginning in cell A2, if I hold down Control Shift while I use the right directional arrow, you see how I've selected all of the cells in the top row beginning with cell A2. If I continue to hold down Control Shift while I press the down directional arrow, now I've selected all of the cells until I find the first blank row. This is what I want to copy, Control C, come back to the original data set in, in the cell that contains the asterisk, use Control V as the keyboard shortcut to paste that data. Notice that the dimensions of the Excel 2003 list have expanded automatically. I can do something similar in Excel 2007, Excel 2010. In this case, what I want to first do is I want to remove the total row. Now notice that I do not have an asterisk in Excel 2007, Excel 2010. Come back here into the recent records or the updated records. At the beginning cell that I want to select, Control Shift right arrow, Control Shift down arrow, Control Shift C to copy. Come back over here to the original data and then paste it with the keyboard shortcut Control V. So notice that the table dimensions have expanded. I can see that with the alternate row shading. Now what I can do is that in addition to expanding the data range vertically by appending records, I can also add in an additional field. 
So in this case, I'd like to add an additional field. I'd like to see the average sale for each unit. That's going to be a calculation of taking the invoice total divided by the unit ship. So let's give a label to this new field. AVG for average, and I'll put unit, and I'll use the dollar sign. So I want to see the average unit dollar sale. Now I'm in Excel 2010. This also works for Excel 2007. So equal to create a formula. I'm going to click here in one cell and notice up here that I have a bracket around the field label. So I want to take the invoice total divided by the unit shipped. So now I have a different type of formula. Watch what will happen, and this is really exciting. I could click Enter, I could use Control Enter, or in this case, I'm going to click on the Enter uh, button up here in the formula uh, uh, in the formula bar. Click OK, and now notice how the formula was copied down into each of the cells, and it's the same formula in each of the cells. Now, switching over to Excel 2003, I can do something similar. I could add that same field average AVG units and I'll use the dollar sign I will use control enter so you see that the dimensions horizontally for my Excel 2003 list have expanded and I can create a formula equals I'll point to the invoice total divided by the unit ship now notice that it's simply selecting the cells as you would expect in a normal formula control enter and now if I want to copy it down, I don't have it copied down automatically as I do in Excel 2007, Excel 2010. I could simply double click the autofill button on the lower right corner and there you go. So in addition to expanding our data set by appending rows or records vertically, I can expand the dimensions of the list, I can expand the dimensions of the uh, field or the table by adding in a different row. In Excel 2010, I have the IntelliSense, which is referring to the field labels, and it automatically fills in the formulas going down vertically. All right, now, before I finish off this lesson, let me return over here to Excel 2003, and let me show you a quick way that I can add in the alternate row shading. So beginning in this cell, Control-Shift, right arrow, arrow Control-Shift, down arrow. I've selected all of the cells except for the top row labels. What I want to do is I want to apply conditional formatting. So in Excel 2003, the Format menu, Conditional Formatting. Rather than choosing the cell value is, from the drop-down, I want to create a formula. So the formula is, and all formulas begin with the equal sign. I'm going to use two functions, the Mod function first, and inside the Mod function, I'm going to use the Row function. I'm going to use the row function with no arguments inside. Rather, I'm going to use comma 2. Now, the comma 2 means that every second row, every other row, I want to apply a different formatting. So I'll use the right parentheses to close this off and finish the formula with equals 0. So equals mod, left parentheses, row, left and right parentheses, comma 2, right parentheses equals zero. Now when I have the value equals true, when the result of this formula is going to equal to be true, this is the formatting that I want to apply as a pattern. So let's apply yellow formatting. Click OK, click OK, and now you see that every other row has the yellow formatting over there. So that's how we could apply the alternate row shading. So that's an example of how you can take advantage of Excel 2007, Excel 2010 tables, or in Excel 2003, the list. And that's an example of the tips that I offer on my DVD, the 50 best tips for Excel 2007. And I'll see you in the next lesson.